is Dugan Mates. Today I have a sweet video for you. That's right, new intro. And new hairstyle. So, I've been making games for about 5 years now. And during those 5 years, I had a lot of fun learning game development. And I made some pretty good games. And some bad games as well, like, what even is this? There was even a time where I gave up on game development. In this video, I will share with you my journey as a game developer. How did I start this journey? Why did I give up? What made me come back for a second chance? And most importantly, what can you learn from my mistakes? The answer to all of these questions lies somewhere in the past. So let's go back in time. Before we begin, allow me to introduce myself. Greetings and welcome. My name is Anderson K. Raj. But you can call me Anderson. I just realized that throughout all of my videos, I haven't said my real name once. You probably just know me as Tactical Programmer. THE Tactical Programmer. Anyway, back to the video. The year was 2016. Anderson was still going to school, playing Pokemon Go along the way. And it turns out, today's lecture is something called flowcharts. The name was interesting to say the least. So I was like, alright teacher, show me your best. So then he opened this thing and ripped another thing from it and clicked the button and then it started making noises. While that was going on, he took another thing from his thing and then suddenly there was a picture on the wall. And before he even explained what they did, I kind of already figured it out right away. And thus, a flowchart guy was born. But there wasn't much to what the teacher was teaching us about flowcharts. It was just the basics. So I thought, let me know more about this thing. Let me investigate. And when I started researching, then I found out about game development. And the internet was like, hehehe, <laughs> wanna make games? You too can be a game developer, boy. boy. So when I found out that Unity was free, I immediately began downloading it. And I wanted to make a horror game, kind of like Slenderman. So I created a new project and began following some tutorials that teach you how Unity works and how to make a horror game. Then came my first lesson. Before I could make a horror game, I knew I should educate myself in the art of making games. So I researched about game design. I saw many videos and read many articles on the topic. And since I wanted to make a horror game, I researched game design of horror games. And there was this one video that basically condensed everything about horror game design. The title was what are the design elements of a good horror game? I usually just save these videos in a YouTube playlist, but something told me to take notes on this video, and I did, on this really old notebook. And good thing I did, because I haven't been able to find that video ever since watching it once, and I was able to get some pretty good ideas for my horror game. But that's all they were, ideas. The execution part was hard for a beginner like me at the time, so it didn't take long for me to lose motivation and delete the project. Not too long after, I decided to create another project, and you'd think I learned my lesson from the first experience. Yeah, no. This time, I decided to make the same game, but bigger and with more features and mechanics. One very specific mechanic that I wanted was quick time events. If you're not familiar with it, a quick time event is basically a moment in your game when time slows down and a button appears on screen. Usually, they have this circle that keeps getting smaller, indicating to you the exact time the button should be pressed. In my game, I wanted this event to appear when you got caught by the game's monster. If you press the button correctly, you would escape the monster's grasp, basically giving you a second life. And as you could probably guess, I never finished that game. I never got to implement that mechanic, and I didn't even finish the first level. There's the second lesson. Don't be too ambitious in the beginning. You're a beginner. Instead, just make a really small game. You can find playlists on YouTube that teach you how to make a simple game from start to finish. And if you don't want that, just make a Flappy Bird clone. Whatever option you choose, your only goal should be to finish that game. By the end of 2016, I gave up on game dev. I thought I wasn't cut out for it, because I couldn't even finish one game. I wasn't doing anything related to game dev throughout 2017. And by the end of the year, an old friend of mine convinced me to get back into game dev. So I thought to myself, okay, let's just make a simple game for the sake of making a game. 
So in the beginning of 2018, I downloaded Unreal Engine to get a feel for the engine and see which one I prefer between it and Unity. And in the span of one week, I followed this endless runner tutorial series. There were 7 videos in total, video length ranging between 6 to 12 minutes. There were a couple of bugs that made me scratch my head the whole time I was fixing them, but nonetheless, I finished their tutorial series. Then I added my own twists and turns, making it look like a ninja game. And finally, Dungeon Dash was born. And hey, would you look at that? We have our third lesson. Never give up. Anyone can do it. This was the first game I ever finished. And to this day, I am very proud of it. Once you finish your first game, it only gets easier from there. When I thought about writing a computer program, I would get butterflies in my stomach. I wasn't ready for my role as a technical programmer. And since I wanted to make a game, I used Unreal Engine because they had their blueprint system. But then, I had a moment of enlightenment when the Unity Gods decided to bless me with their presence and show me the way. I ultimately decided to go back to Unity, because with the small amount of tutorials that I followed on C-Sharp programming, I felt like actually coding the game was better than a visual scripting solution. And good thing I did, because with all that I've learned after going back to Unity, I'm now able to teach others how to program. That's very awesome if I do say so myself. After finishing Dungeon Dash, I started going to university. And that was the place where I learned to program properly. That was when I became a true technical programmer. The main language to this day being Java. I love Java. That's probably why I like C Sharp as well. They're very similar. Fast forward to 2019, I made another game for the GMTK Game Jam. The theme was Only One. And my game was Only One Dash. Hard and unbalanced, but I did it. Like, no joke, you can't complete a single enemy wave without dying. There are a bunch of enemies, they all fire at the exact same time, and there's a pretty long cooldown before you can move again. Anyway, then I decided to switch my attention to mobile games. And from November of 2019 to October of 2020, I made two more games. The first being Midnight Drive, a retro wave music racing game. The feel I was going for this game was an 80s nostalgia music racing game? I mean, this isn't even a racing game. You just control the car and collect the spinning cubes to the beat of the song. And look, the buildings jump! The other game I made was Demon Shuriken Master, a top-down ninja shooting game. This game has a terrible tutorial, only one enemy and no boss fights. Like, you're going through this dungeon getting rid of enemies and there's no boss fight? I'm probably going to update this game soon enough. Fast forward to today, I now have a YouTube channel and I'm working on a 2D beat-em-up game. Now, what is the ultimate lesson that I've learned as a game developer? That would have to be that Google is your best friend. What I'm trying to say is that you should learn how to Google properly. That's half the job of being a programmer. Not just any programmer, a tactical programmer. Now that I've learned so much about Unity and game dev in general, the future looks promising. In this channel, I'll be sharing the rest of my game dev journey with you guys. And that's it! Thank you so much for watching this video everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Smash like if you did and subscribe to become a technical programmer. And as always, stay awesome.